Hey, welcome back. We're in Exodus 21 today, verses 4 to 6. We're talking about slavery. Well, we're talking about kind of an indentured servant kind of thing. Let's look at these verses and see what as we continue to read here. If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall belong to her master and he shall go out alone. But if the slave plainly says, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out as a free man, then his master shall bring him to God. Then he shall bring him to the door or the doorpost, and his master shall pierce his ear with an awl, and he shall serve him permanently. Okay, so here's the case where you've got a person, they've uh, sold themselves sort of into indentured servanthood. They are sort of a kind of slave. Uh, now, the master brings a woman, and they can get together and become sort of married, but the master owns the woman. And so this guy, if he's going to keep her and keep the family in situation there, if he makes a family with her, he's going to have to either leave her or I guess he has to, he, he can choose to be joined and become a slave permanently because when his time runs out, he'll be sent away. You know, have a nice day, go away. So he can choose instead to become a permanent kind of a slave. But this is contrary, really, to God's plan. God just delivered his people from permanent slavery in Egypt, right, at the beginning of this chapter. The book of Exodus is largely about how God delivers his people from that kind of bondage and slavery. So it is contrary to God's mode, primary mode for us as humans to serve permanently as enslaved persons or indentured servant type persons. So if the person decides, yes, I'm going to make a family here and uh, I'm going to become a permanent slave, he can do that. He's, he's given free will. He can make this choice. And so it says here, very interesting, in verse 6, then if he makes that decision, if he wants that, then his master brings him where? Well, he brings him to God, it says. Okay, so he takes him out by the door. He's going to drive a, uh, well, it'll be the right ear. He's going to drive a hole through the right ear. And that person is going to be marked publicly visible that that person is a permanent slave. Why does the mark go in the ear? Well, some have said that because God spoke to them and gave them their freedom, that they've heard that his purpose for them is freedom. And then when they choose to be a permanent human servant, why they're sort of contradicting that. And so, uh, so, so that's why the hole goes through the ear. Interesting today, we have people who pierce themselves, they pierce their face, they pierce their nose, they pierce their ears, they pierce wherever they feel like they can find a spot to pierce. There's some places they pierce. We won't talk about all those. But the piercing of the body and leaving a hole there, that is a mark of slavery. That's in the Bible. That's what we see it right here. So uh, if, you, if you've been pierced, why, you know, you can't kind of unpierce yourself, but what you can do is go forward and be a free person. You can go forward and belong to the God of heaven as his free person. So God's plan for you and I is to be free persons, uh, fully, uh, fully delivered, fully delivered from bondage. And so we have an interesting picture here of somebody who's sort of almost choosing to be less than God's ideal plan for them. Fortunately, God is ready to deliver us, even from some of the bad choices we've made, and bring us up higher, and we can do that. All right, may God bless you. See you tomorrow morning. <laughs>